The HP Outdoors Waterfowl Podcast is fueled by Yukonuba. If you want to get the most of your dog in your training sessions, you need nutrition that holds nothing back. Yukonuba's new premium performance lineup is built with the nutrients dogs need to help unleash their max potential. That starts with providing energy that matches their efforts, supporting optimal nutrient delivery, and supporting post-exercise recovery. Check out the new Yukonuba Premium Performance lineup and find your dog's fuel at yukonubasportingdogs.com. You are listening to the HP Outdoors Waterfowl Podcast. The HP Outdoors Waterfowl Podcast is powered by Gornerstone Gundog Academy. CGA is the world's most comprehensive online gun dog training resource. They've got over 160 instructional videos that includes everything you need to take your seven-week-old puppy to a finished gun dog. Visit cornerstonegundogacademy.com to sign up for the free preview module and begin your training journey today. Cornerstone Gun Dog Academy, the most advanced gun dog training resource on the web. Lifetime Decoy's new Flex Float Mallard Decoys set the new standard for quality and durability in waterfowl decoys. An EVA foam, open bottom construction combined with patent-pended dual-flow swim keel system allows for more movement and less wind, the ability to sit flat on ice and dirt, and virtually indestructible design which can be shot or otherwise punctured and still float. Each decoy weighs only 11 ounces with the self-writing keel weights removed or 19 ounces with the weights installed. Check them out today at lifetimedecoys.com. Soundgear is offering a 35% discount to the HP Outdoors listeners for their instant fit industrial and shooter products. You can head over to soundgearhearing.com and use the promo code HPO35 to claim your discount today. Lucky Duck, about the only creature they can't deceive is you. Lucky Duck is more than a brand. It's a lifestyle built around the subtle art of critter deception. So while you're focused on the business end of your shotgun or rifle, know that they're completely focused on what matters most, you. So whether you're in a duck blind, dove field, on a predator stand, or chasing turkeys, they're confident that their products will help you succeed. Check out their full lineup at luckyduck.com and keep up with their latest news by following them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. All right, we've made it. The final lesson in module four. This is lesson number 12, recovering wounded birds. So the one waste law says that you must, must make a reasonable effort to retrieve all waterfowl that you kill or cripple and keep these birds in your actual custody while you're in the field. And that you must immediately kill any wounded birds that you retrieve and count those birds uh, or that you, that you hang on a minute here. Let me rephrase this. You must immediately kill any wounded birds that you retrieve and count those birds towards your daily bag limit. Um, basically, you have to you have to make an effort to recover every bird that you wound, cripple, kill, etc. And they need to be counted towards your daily bag limit. Um, this is huge when you go into all of the other things that we've been talking about, staying concealed, uh, using calling, decoy spreads, whatever you can do to get birds closer to you and in a more advantageous position to be harvested by you as the hunter, that will prevent you from running into any sort of wanton waste issues because it will provide you easier recovery for the birds that you shoot. Yeah. And I think, you know, ethically and by law, like all unrecovered birds should be counted against your daily bag limit. Yeah. So if you, if you do wound one and you can't find it after you've tried and tried and tried and made that reasonable effort, you need to count that. And I know, you know, every guide that we've hunted with, if you get one that sails and they can't find it and we search and search, like that's counted, right? That's counted towards your limit. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. And, you know, personally, and as an individual, you need to do that when you're out hunting as well. Yeah. And certainly having a retrieving dog makes this much, much easier to accomplish, right? Um, the dog will go in places that you can't, you know, uh, can deal with different conditions that you would have a harder time dealing with. Uh, but you really need to think about your hunting area and identify areas where retrieving a bird could be a challenge or 
almost impossible if that were to be the case and adjust for that. And maybe you don't shoot, shoot birds in certain positions because they might go into those areas, but things you want to look for, right. Is deeper water, uh, tall or really thick vegetation that you can't get into, um, unsafe ice that might not be safe to walk on, uh, mud that might be too thick. You know, if you hunt tidal areas, there's just some areas where you're just not getting into it. There's just, you know, mud and et cetera. You're just not going to get to it. And then the big, another big thing too, is private property. If you shoot a bird, um, that flies on a private property, you know, that creates challenges. So, you know, no, no sort of your position relative to the private property in your area and make all reasonable attempts to plan for the worst case. I know, Dan, you have a particular spot that you guys hunt a lot where retrieving birds can be difficult without a dog because uh, you're out in the swamp on these grass thickets, floating, 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 floating vegetation. Things. Right. And, but the water is very deep. So you can't just wade around and recover your ducks. So it can be a challenge over there. Yeah. Dogs are, dogs are key. And, you know, you were, you were mentioning that they can get into easier spots, but so many times I've had Kimber out and her nose has found ducks that there's no, I mean, we've had that, that really great gadwall shoot that we had, uh, that we talk about all the time. My brother shot a double with one shell and screamed it out. That's just a funny memory there, but you know, there were birds that were three feet in front of me under brush and I'm looking and looking, can't find them kicking, kicking everything, you know, cattails that were bent in half and can't find it. Kimber comes right over and picks a bird up right out in front of us. And I was like, that's incredible. But, you know, dogs definitely help. Um, and there's, there's been multiple times that we've, we've went back in swamps in the dark and the sun comes up and you're like, I'm not even going to shoot a bird here because there's no way that I'd find it. And, you know, you, you might make the adjustment to go back to more open water because, you know, even one, a dog would probably get stuck and drown or you're not going to get back in there. So I think that's a great point. Like just analyze and, and make sure that you can make that reasonable effort to retrieve a duck that you shoot. Yeah. I think it's just something that you add into your scouting routine when you're, figuring out where you're going to hunt. So, um, Dan, we've made it lesson 12 in the books, module four, the hunt in the books. We're going to go on now to the final module of the course, module five, which we will discuss after hunt processing and taxidermy. That's going to do it for this episode of the HP Outdoors Waterfowl Podcast. If you're new to the show, head over to iTunes, check out some of our past episodes. And while you're there, leave us a five-star rating and review. It's the best way for like-minded hunters just like you to find our show. Check us out on social media. Check us out over at hpoutdoors.com and anywhere you can find quality podcast content. That's going to do it for this week. Till next time, for Dan, I'm Josh. Take care. Take care.